Hello viewers, welcome to K-Diagnostics Duo here. Today we have a 2008 Dodge Charger with a 3.5 liter. The complaint on this car is that the throttle body light comes on while the engine is running. And when the throttle body light comes on, the engine starts to lose power. The car basically runs poorly after that. So what we're going to do is we're going to confirm the customer's complaint. After confirming the customer's complaint, we're going to connect the scan tool to the car to see what kind of trouble codes we have in memory. The customer mentioned that this issue is intermittent. It happens sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't occur all the time, but every once in a while, the throttle light will come on and then the vehicle will start running poorly after that. So, I'm going to turn on the key so I can show you the light that I'm talking about. So this red light here that you see next to the uh, seat belt thingy here, this, this little seat belt person, this light here is the light that comes on while the engine is running. And once this light comes on, the car starts to run poorly. And sometimes the check engine light also comes on. And he said it's intermittent, so hopefully we can duplicate the issue and connect a scan tool to it so we can pull up the codes and see what kind of directions we can go to fix this. So now I'm gonna start the car. As you can see, the car is running. The throttle light is not on and the check engine light is not on. The only light that we have on the dash is this tire pressure monitor light. We're gonna ignore that because this is not what we are gonna fix. And as I'm talking right now, the vehicle started kind of, it kind of uh, shuddered a little bit. And right there, the throttle body light started flashing. I'm glad I was able to catch that on camera. So right there, the throttle light is flashing. I mean, I'm flooring the pedal right now, so I'm stepping on the accelerator pedal all the way to the floor. And our RPM gauge is only going up to 3,000 RPMs, okay? And I can feel the engine losing power. The engine is not really revving all the way up to 5,000 or 6,000. So it feels like it's limited, okay? It's like the rev limiter has kicked in so right there guys customers complaint confirmed so now I'm going to turn off the engine and then connect the scan tool to the car so we can see what kind of trouble codes we have in memory I also noticed that this traction control light also came on I don't know if this is I don't know if this light has anything to do with this but it wasn't on before now as soon as this throttle light started flashing, this traction control light also came on. All right, so now let's turn off the car and turn the key on. And now I'm gonna connect the scan tool to the car and then once I get the scan tool connected, I'll bring you guys back up. All right guys, so I got the scan tool connected to the vehicle and here is the trouble code that we have in memory. We have one trouble code, P2173 high airflow slash vacuum leak detected, slow accumulation. So basically, according to this little description here of the trouble code, our issue is a vacuum leak. Well, don't let this vacuum leak detected code throw you off. Because remember, when we confirmed the customer's complaint, the throttle body light was flashing. Well, I've seen a defective throttle body assembly cause this trouble code to come up because you can have a throttle body motor that's defective and while the throttle body motor starts to go bad it causes the throttle plate to open up a little bit more so it doesn't close the throttle plate properly as the uh, throttle plate doesn't close it allows more air to enter inside the uh, intake which is gonna drive the map sensor signal high. And the computer is gonna look at that signal and think that there is a vacuum leak on the intake. So 
make sure this doesn't throw you off. Now what I want to do is I want to look up this code and see the code setting criteria. Let's find out what the computer sees to set this code. And basically, hopefully this is going to be a quick one because when you have a throttle body light that flashes on a dash, your issue will most likely be a wiring issue or a throttle body assembly. In the throttle body assembly, you will have two throttle position sensors and a throttle motor that opens and closes the throttle plate. Or you could even have an issue with your APP sensors on the accelerator pedal. So now what I want to do is let's back out of here and go to the troubleshooter so we can look up this code. So let's go to troubleshooter and our code was 2173. So let's go to code tips. So it was P2173. So here is P2173. All right, so here is our trouble code, P2173, high airflow slash vacuum leak detected. So now let's read about this trouble code. It says, state monitor, ignition on and engine running with no map sensor DTCs. And the code set condition is, a large vacuum leak has been detected or both of the TPS sensors have failed based on their position being 2.5 volts and the calculated MAP value is less than the gas flow adaptation value is too high. One trip fault, the code will set within five seconds. So basically, you, so this code sets when you have a vacuum leak or when both TPS sensors have failed. And it tells us here that this is a one trip fault code. And here it says ETS, so electronic throttle control light will flash. And we confirm that the electronic throttle body is flashing. And here are the possible causes. Vacuum leak resistance in the five volt supply, five volt supply circuit shorted to ground, resistance in the map signal uh, circuit. So basically, when you have this code, it's either a vacuum leak or a defective throttle position sensor or throttle assembly. Let's focus on the throttle assembly first. If everything checks out okay on the throttle assembly, remember the mass, uh, the map sensor was also mentioned here. If we, if everything checks out okay on the throttle assembly, then we will check the map sensor because if the map sensor is sending a skewed signal to the ECM, the ECM is now going to know the right pressure inside the manifold and it's going to adjust the air fuel ratio accordingly and which can cause an engine to run poorly. So let's back out of here and look at data. So I want to look at throttle body data. So let's go to data and we're going to look at throttle data. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the TPS sensor data pids. So TPS1 and TPS2. Okay. So, so now I'm going to start it and let's look at this data with the engine running. I don't like this, you know, these spikes and drops here. I don't know. I don't think this is normal. We should have a straight line on both of these graphs, but... Let's start it and see what happens. So the engine is running. Now, this is kind of how I want to see this. You know, I don't want to see any drops or spikes on the uh, TPS graphs. So now I'm going to step on the accelerator pedal. So let's snap it. Okay. I mean, the snap looks good. I mean, they're definitely mirroring each other. This one is going from four volts down to zero. This one is going pretty much from zero volts or 0 0.5 volts to four volts. Now, this is processed data, okay? This is what's coming from the engine computer. Oh, now the engine is, is actually running rough. And our 
throttle light is still flashing. So, I mean, this kind of looks, oh, can you tell the difference now? Now with the throttle flashing, when I give it gas, we are no longer going up to four volts. Watch this. So we're only hitting three volts. And this one is no longer coming down to zero volts. Can you see this? So now it, it kind of went up. Now watch this. So when I snap it, it should go from zero, I mean from uh, 0 0.5 to four volts. And this one should go from four pretty much down to 0 0.5. But right, I just snapped it. I snapped it again. You see, we are barely hitting two volts. And same thing on both sides. So, so it's starting to look like we have uh, either one or two defective TPS sensors. So now what I need to do with the engine running, I'm gonna go under the hood and back probe these TPS sensors, okay? Because this can happen if we have a if we are dropping out our 5 volt reference on the sensors or if we are dropping out our ground but I don't think we are dropping out our ground and if we were dropping our 5 volt reference we should see this line here drop down and this one just stay here so but this is not dropping so I don't think we are dropping out our 5 volt so what I need to do is I'm gonna scope these four wires on the throttle body assembly we're gonna back probe the uh, 5 volt reference, we're gonna back probe the ground and the TPS uh, signals, so both signal wires. Now, let's look at the uh, wiring diagram here. I hope I have good internet connection. So uh, I would like to do this with the engine running because I don't wanna turn it off. Since this is intermittent, if I turn the car off, it might take a little longer to get this thing to act up. So here is the throttle position, I mean the throttle assembly. So we have our pink and yellow wire, which is our five volt. So I'm gonna go to this throttle assembly and back probe this pink and yellow wire. And I'm also gonna back probe this uh, brown, so dark, brown dark with a green trace, which is our TPS sensor one signal wire and then the brown wire with a orange trace. This is the uh, TPS sensor one. I don't know if I, did I say sensor one here? Uh, so this is TPS sensor signal, uh, sensor two, and this one is sensor one. And then the other one, the last one here is the brown dark. So no, brown with a dark blue. So brown wire with the, uh, dark blue tracer and this is our TPS sensor ground so both sensors so these two sensors share the 5 volt and the ground they share this 5 volt and the ground internally okay so I'm gonna go under the hood and back probe all these wires and once I get all the wires back probed I'll come back here in the car and bring you guys back up alright guys so I back probed all the wires on the throttle body assembly and I did this with the engine running because I don't want to turn off the car because if I turn off the car, it's not going to be acting up again. You see how the throttle body light is flashing. So I want to test it with the light flashing. So if I were to turn it off, we're going to have to sit here for a couple more minutes or even hours until it starts acting up. So now that it's acting up, this is the right time to test it. So let's go to scope multimeter. Lab scope. All right, guys. So now we're gonna turn on our channels on the lab scope. Our first channel is gonna be the yellow trace, and the yellow trace will be our five volt reference to the TPS sensors. And as you can see, we have five volt there. Our five volt is not dropping. Let's look at a digital number. So right there we have. Focus, focus. Right there we have 5 volt okay so now we're gonna I'm gonna turn on 
our second channel which is going to be the green trace and this will be our TPS sensor grounds okay so the ground that supplies uh, well, the, the wire that supplies ground to both TPS sensors and the digital number here is 0 0.02 volts so right there and our sensor ground is good so now our third channel is gonna be the blue trace and the blue trace will be TPS sensor 1 signal wire and as you can see this signal wire here doesn't look good you see how it's got some I mean this is already looking bad to me so now I'm gonna accelerate so let's snap it this thing is barely going up now let's turn on the fourth channel which is gonna be the red trace and the red trace will be TPS sensor 2 signal oh my gosh look at this whoa so let's pause this wow do you see this so both TPS sensors are defective and we're not dropping our 5 volt reference our ground is still good so let's turn off these channels for now as you can see our 5 volt is still there our ground is there now let's turn off let's turn them back on and let's turn off our 5 volt and our ground so as you can see the blue trace barely went up so this one here the red trace as you can see it was around 4.5 volt here it's dropped so around this area is where I snapped it so I stepped on the accelerator pedal it came down but as you can see there are so many glitches you know and so many dropouts so classic symptom of a defective throttle body assembly so with the data I'm seeing right now I feel comfortable calling for a throttle body assembly okay the throttle position sensors are defective but we have to get the whole throttle assembly and replace it as a unit so watch this wow so let me turn this off let's see if this is gonna get better when I start it back up so the engine is running you see how it kind of got better okay wait Hold on. <laughs> Man, this this throttle assembly is completely dead. Completely. Watch this. So basically, the blue trace should go. I mean, we should see a nice and increase uh, in voltage here. So this voltage should increase gradually and nicely. You know this one will go up and the other one will go down so they both go in opposite directions so this one goes up and down this one goes down and then up but this here this is completely dirty this is not a good looking signal okay all right guys so I'm gonna leave it right here uh, let me take the key out so right there defective throttle body assembly okay so our TPS sensors are defective and as you can see TPS sensor 2 is kind of dropping and then it's going up and the second one is not even going up so I feel comfortable with the data that I'm looking at right now I feel comfortable replacing this throttle body assembly so let's go under the hood I'm gonna show you the wires that I I actually I said I back probed but I didn't back probe them actually I pierced them but as you pierce the wires at the end just make sure you use some liquid tape to 
close all the holes that the piercing tool uh, pierces on the wire. Um, let's go under the hood. I'll show you all my hookups and then I will order the uh, electronic throttle body assembly and when it, once it comes in, I will install it and then we're going to do some last checks with the new part and then this car should be back to the customer. Let's go under the hood and I'll show you my hookups. So we are under the hood and all my four lab scope uh, leads are going to the throttle body assembly. All right guys, so we are back here on this Dodge Charger. I got the new throttle body from the dealership. I had to wait two days to get the throttle body. So we're gonna get it out of the box and make sure that it looks like the one we have on the car. And as you can see, our new throttle body looks like the one that we have on the car. So we ordered the right part. And I'm gonna show you the part number. So this is the OEM part. And here it is, I hope you can see that. So right there is the part number for this throttle body. Okay, so now I'm going to zoom you guys in around this throttle body area so that we can replace this throttle body. The throttle body has four 10 millimeter bolts and it's pretty easy to replace. So we're gonna remove these bolts and get this throttle body replaced. So we're gonna remove this tube. We're just gonna put it out of the way. So here are the 10 millimeter bolts that we have to remove so that we can get the throttle body out. So now I'm gonna disconnect the throttle body electrical connector. So there's a little locking tab here that you have to push back. And then there's a tab that you have to push down and then pull. So this is disconnected. So there's a little bracket here that we have to remove. This bracket right here. So once we remove this bracket, and then we will undo these four 10 millimeter bolts to get the throttle body out. So this bracket has, I believe, two 13 millimeter bolts down over here. So I'll get a 13 so we can remove those bolts. This bracket has two bolts on the head that holds it down. So you're gonna have to undo the 15 millimeter bolts that hold this bracket against the cylinder head. You don't have to undo them completely, but you just have to loosen them to give you enough play to push this bracket back a little bit. So now I'm going to remove these nuts. So these two 10 millimeter nuts. And as you can see, I have enough play on this bracket. So now I can just push it aside. And then I can remove these 10 millimeter bolts to get the throttle out. So I'm gonna remove this one. All right, so here comes our old throttle body. I mean, this old throttle body still looks good, you know, but I guess the TPS sensors in the throttle assembly are just are all bad. So, the throttle body assembly is removed. So after removing the throttle body assembly, we have to inspect the throttle body gasket. And this gasket here looks good. So it's not torn or swollen. So we can still reuse this gasket. So now I'm going to bring our new throttle body. So here is our new throttle body. So I'm gonna install the new throttle. So here is the new one from the dealer. So now we're gonna install it.
Now we're gonna reconnect our throttle body electrical connector. So we're just gonna just gonna push it in and push the locking tab. Okay, so we're still gonna reuse these piercing tools, like double check our signals. So now I'm going to reinstall the air cleaner tube. We're gonna reconnect our intake air temperature sensor electrical connector. Okay, so we're almost done. We're almost ready to go back inside the car. One thing I forgot to mention before we go inside the car is that when you replace this throttle body, you're gonna have to calibrate it, okay? We're gonna use our scan tool to calibrate the throttle body. And on these Chryslers, when you calibrate the throttle body, you have to make sure that you reconnect the intake air temperature sensor. If you don't reconnect the intake air temperature sensor, the calibration is not gonna go through. So the calibration is not gonna be completed because the computer will look at the signal from the intake air temperature sensor. If it sees the wrong input from that sensor, especially when you have it disconnected, it's gonna see a higher voltage. It's not gonna uh, allow the calibration to go through. So you have to make sure that I've seen people trying to calibrate the throttle body and since this is a speed density engine, you can still start this engine without this air cleaner tube. So they try to calibrate it without installing the air cleaner tube because if you don't have this air cleaner tube installed, I mean your sensor is not going to be there. You're not going to connect your sensor. Basically, if you do not connect your intake air temperature sensor, you won't be able to calibrate this throttle body. So you have to make sure that your intake air temperature sensor is connected before you calibrate the throttle body. So now let's go inside the car and do the calibration. Then we're gonna look at the signals from our lab scope. I'm sure everything is gonna look better. And then we'll take it for the test drive. We're gonna erase the trouble code. Then we'll wrap up this video. So let's go inside the car and verify everything we just did. All right, so we are here inside the car. I did connect the scan tool to the vehicle. So now we're gonna scan the car so we can calibrate the throttle body. So we do have some electronic throttle control learn values let's click on this DTCs are reset during this test okay save diagnostic data before proceeding let's proceed key must be on and engine off this test will learn TPS voltages and APP position okay Follow prompts during relearn to either hold or release accelerator pedal, okay? Please wait for test to begin. I can hear the throttle body click under the hood. Press and hold accelerator pedal to floor. Okay, hold accelerator firmly on the floor, okay? Release accelerator pedal, okay. Do not touch accelerator, all right. So basically at this point, I'm just following the instructions on the screen. So ETC learned complete. As you can see, it says electronic throttle learn completed, okay. So we're good. ETC learned passed, right there. So we've done the relearn on the throttle body. Let's back out of here and let's go to codes. Okay, so we no longer have any trouble codes in memory, which is good. Now let's go to our lab scope now. So we're gonna look at the, uh, we're just gonna look at the sensors, I mean the TPS sensor signal waveforms. Actually, before we start the car, I wanted to show you the old waveform that we saw with the bad throttle body. So let's go to scope. I did save the uh, waveform that we saw with the bad throttle body. 
and then we will compare it with the new throttle body. So I named it bed, so right here, bed dodge charger throttle assembly. So let's double click on that. And here is the waveform. Do you see what we were seeing with the bed throttle body? Look at that. You see how dirty that looks? Look at that signal right there. So check this out. You see this? I'm sorry for the glare, but look at that. See how dirty that is? So this is the signal that we saw with the defective throttle body, with the throttle body that we just replaced. So now let's back out of here and go to our lab scope so we can see what kind of signal we're gonna see with the new throttle body. With this new throttle body, our signal should be nice and clean. So now I'm gonna start the engine. So I'm gonna give it gas. So look at that. I'm sorry for the glare, guys. You see this? You see how nice this looks? So this TPS, one of the TPS sensors is going from low to high. And you see how it's increasing nicely. There are no dropouts, no glitches, and I don't even have any filters turned on. You see how nice this waveform looks? This one is going from low to high, and then the other one is going from high to low, okay? This is what you should see on a good throttle body assembly. So let's just look at the bed one one more time. So you can see the difference. I mean, I'm sure you already saw the difference, but let's just look at that just one more time before we go on our test drive. So right here, this is the file. Look at the difference. You see how this one started going up and it was just dropping out and it couldn't even go past uh, three volts. You see how it came down here and it came down to a flat line. And look at this one, you see how it's just dropping out here. So this other sensor here, this blue trace was really bad. Okay, so now let's go back to our lab scope and see, you see the difference? You see how nice this is? So this is a fix, guys. I'm sure once we take it on a test drive, this throttle body light is not gonna flash anymore. We made the right call. I'm sure this vehicle is fixed. So now let's go on a test drive and we're gonna drive it for maybe 15 minutes and then we'll be back to see, just to double check. I'm sure this is fixed, but we're just gonna go for a drive and see if that throttle body light is gonna flash. I'm, sh I'm sure it won't, but let's just go uh, test it. So let's back out of here and let's go back to the scan tool again to see if there's any trouble codes. And as you can see, there are no trouble codes in memory. So I'm gonna get the scan tool out of the way. So let's take this car for a spin. So we are driving the vehicle. The vehicle drives well, it has power. I've been driving for almost 15 minutes now and uh, our throttle body light didn't come on so the vehicle drives well everything feels good so I feel comfortable giving this car back to the customer I mean this is fixed guys just look at the dash no throttle body light okay the throttle is not flashing remember when we were looking at the data pits inside the shop as we were just standing still the throttle body light started flashing and as you can see I'm driving you know, it's been a little while since I've been driving, but the throttle body light didn't come on. And with the uh, signals that I saw on the lab scope, you know, both TPS sensors are increasing nicely on the lab. I mean, when we were looking at the signal on the lab scope, so they're both increasing nicely right now. There are no dropouts, no glitches. So I feel comfortable uh, giving this car back to the customer. So. I'm gonna turn off the camera. I'll bring you guys back up once I get to the shop so we can wrap up this video. All right guys, so I'm back here at the shop. I was driving the vehicle with my scope test leads still connected to the throttle body electrical connector, okay? And our signals and everything looked good. Um, the code didn't come back up. And as you can see, our TPS sensor, or our throttle body uh, light is no longer flashing. It didn't flash. I've driven it for almost 20 minutes. It runs very well. So I'm gonna leave it right over here, guys. So that was the issue. The throttle body assembly was bad. And remember, before you replace any components, you always have to make sure you check your powers, your grounds, 
and your signals. If you have a lab scope, it's always ideal using a lab scope, but if you don't, you can still use a multimeter. So, I hope you like this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumb down. But if you do, you gotta tell me why so we can make better videos in the future. If you have any comments, questions, criticism, leave them in the comment box. If this is your first time here, subscribe to my YouTube channel, K Diagnostics. Ring the bell so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.